going on my friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic and today we're going to be talking about SC Newtone and S-Log3 because it's a massive question I get asked in my Instagram a lot. Now I pretty much shoot S-Log3 with almost everything or Cine EI, depends on which camera I actually utilize, but there has been a project that I shot predominantly all s Tone, and I'm going to explain the reasons why it was actually way more beneficial to shoot in s Tone than it was in S-Log3. But we're going to be talking about the reasons why you shouldn't be using s Cinetone and some of the situations where you're going to be finding it very difficult to use that picture profile and where it will be very beneficial to utilize S-Log3 and then obviously the tips when it comes to exposure and not ruining your footage. So let's get into it. So what is s Tone? Let's dive into this. The s Tone picture profile was introduced with Sony's FX9 and FX6 cameras. It was designed to provide a more cinematic look straight out of the camera with a warmer color palette and softer highlights. It is a combination of the previous cine profiles and the Hollywood color science from the Sony Venice camera. This profile can be useful for filmmakers who want to achieve a filmic look without having to do a lot of color grading in post-production. So you're probably thinking, well, what is S-Log3? Let's get into it. S-Log is a flat picture profile that captures more dynamic range than other picture profiles. It is designed to capture as much detail as possible in the highlights and in the shadows, which makes it easier to grade in post-production. S-Log footage can look dull and desaturated straight out of the camera, but it gives editors and colorists more flexibility to adjust the image in post-production. And there is one big piece of information that we really need to talk about, and this is to stop you from ruining your s tone footage, but we'll talk about it in a second. Now, while this is meant to look like the Sony Venice, it does differ from camera to camera when it comes to all the alpha models. There is a little bit of a color difference between each and every single model that you actually get. Now, one of the unique features about s Tone, essentially it's meant to be your baked in picture profile where you can pretty much just deliver it directly to the client without even touching the footage. Now, it does come with a few caveats where that may not be the desired look and you may have to tweak the colors just a little bit to your liking and it really just depends on personal preference when it comes to that. Now, if you don't know where s Tone is, essentially you go into your picture profile. It should be picture profile 11. Now, if you do have the Sony a7S III and onwards, all of those cameras will have that. And if you do have the A7S III and it doesn't have it, all you need to do is a firmware update and they did give it in a later firmware update. And it's pretty much from that model onwards, all the Sony cameras will have that in picture profile 11. Now, when it comes to the ISO performance in s Cinetone, it is completely different when it comes to S-Log3. It is much lower and it does vary between cameras. So here is a list right now. You can take a screenshot of all the varying ISO levels in s Cinetone. So the ZV-1, for instance, in S-Log3 has a dual base of 640 and 12,800. Whereas where it comes to s Cinetone, this has a dual base of ISO 100 to 2000. So it is much lower, but it can be actually quite useful because it is lower. But when it comes to exposing s Tone over S-Log3, it is definitely a lot different. Pretty much what you see in the back of the camera is what you're going to get. So if you have a look at the multimetering and it says zero, zero, essentially you're going to be fine, but don't stop there when it comes to exposing because multimetering actually gives you a full look at the scene and it's not 100% representative of what you may actually want. If you want to try and prioritize the talent that's in the middle and expose for them, you may have to blow out the skies. But if you want to try and expose and keep the details in the skies, your talent is obviously going to be a lot darker. But these are some of the trade-offs when it comes to s Tone because it does actually have lower dynamic range than S-Log3. But when it comes to exposing this, I absolutely recommend zebras. I always have zebras on. That's the very first thing I actually set up in each alpha camera that I actually have. Now with this one, I personally set zebras to 95%. Some people set it to 100 or 100 plus. It really depends on your workflow. I like to see the zebras at 95%. So essentially when you reach 95% of exposure, that means you'll see little zebra lines going on the screen. And that's how I know I'm getting quite close to my peaked exposure level. So I can at least allow for a little bit of zebras in the sky if I really wanna you know, maintain the quality in the sky. If the sky is complete zebras, then I know it's most likely blown out. But if you start getting zebra levels in the skin tones or pretty much the subject that you're trying to point it at, the zebras in that then you know it's actually going to be very close to overexposed and you definitely need to tone those back because once the highlights are completely clipped you pretty much can't regain them back 
Also, some people set their zebras to 41%, which is pretty much what you're meant to do when it comes to the skin tones and pretty much the correct exposure of the skin. And that's what Sony actually recommends. But I prefer to expose for my highlights so I can see where my clipping points are so I can bring everything back because you can actually bring up the shadows much more than you can recover highlights. Now, another exposure tip is actually false color. And I use this quite a lot when it comes to the FX6 and my external monitors. Now, Sony cameras don't have false color. I'm not 100% sure why, and I really wish they did because it's extremely useful. Essentially, it gives you a full representation of exposure levels of your whole scene with colors. It is extremely useful, and I wish the Sony cameras had this inbuilt. But if you do have an external monitor, you can utilize false color in your external monitors. So this will actually give you the idea of contrast levels between your subject, your highlights, and your shadows. So now knowing the basics about SC Newtone, why the hell would you actually utilize S-Log3? Because it's flat, it looks crap, it's hard to expose for, why would you use it? Now, one of the biggest reasons why I choose S-Log3, and that comes down to dynamic range. Dynamic range is a massive difference between S-Log3 and S-Cinetone. You're able to maintain a lot more of your highlights while keeping your subject nice and exposed correctly. But talking about exposure, this is where things change quite a lot because S-Cinetone, what you see on the back of the camera, essentially is what you're going to get. When it comes to the back of the camera, when you're filming in S-Log3, that's not what you're going to get. You want to try and expose 1.7 to two stops over exposed, and that's going to give you a nice clean image. But the way I personally do this, like I said, I have my zebra levels sent to 95%, and essentially I try and expose it as much as possible without clipping any highlights, maintaining the highlights, and then that's how I know I'm going to expose quite well in post-production because if it is overexposed a little bit, I'm still maintaining my highlights and keeping the details there and I bring all of it down in post-production. Now, some people don't actually like doing that, but that's how I prefer because that gives me the best noise performance possible in the shadows. And that's what you don't wanna do is underexpose S-Log3 because if you try and bring the gain up in post-production in your NLE, it's going to be super noisy and it's not going to look pretty at all. So the biggest question about that one is, do you actually try and expose for your talent or do you try and expose for the sky? Well, it just really depends on what your scene is actually going to be about. If the scene is 110% about the talent or about that subject, expose for the subject as best as possible. If you clip the highlights, you clip the highlights. It's a creative choice. It really just depends. But I still personally prefer to try not to clip the highlights and obviously increase the lighting on the talent to try and bring up those contrast levels closer to the highlights. So that's where if you are filming someone, you're probably trying to light them up. You're trying to use a reflector or a bounce board to try and bring that mid-tones up a little bit more so you can actually keep your highlights exposed nice and correctly. Now, one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people use S-Log3, and that comes to color. As you would notice, S-Log3 is very flat. It's very compressed in the waveforms, and it looks like trash on the back of the screen. <laughs> but a lot of the Sony cameras, the newer Sony cameras anyway, have a Rec. 709 conversion light in there, which you can drop it in there and see kind of what it looks like. Or you can actually import your own light into there as well and see what it looks like as well. But external monitors have had that for quite a while, and you can still do that that way it really depends i actually leave it in s-log3 and i expose with false color if i'm using my fx6 or an external monitor or predominantly those zebras now the only reason why i might actually glance at the multimetering is just to give me an overall feel of where my exposure levels are if i'm sort of like plus 0.3 or plus one and i'm thinking yeah, I'm a little bit underexposed. Maybe I need to bring these levels a little bit up. It just gives me a little bit of a kick to, hey, you know, check the exposure levels again. And that's where I try and increase the exposure levels either by, you know, dropping my ND filters, increasing my aperture, or bringing in some external lighting sources. Now, the biggest reason why for one job I used S-Cinetone for the whole thing, that came down to time and trying to offload it as fast as possible because I was in so many different scenes. I needed to make sure that it was just perfect lighting, perfect colors, perfect white balance each and every single time. And the person needed that afternoon. It was a corporate thing that needed to be pumped out. And s Tone was the easiest picture profile to do so. So I could just literally go straight home to edit, cut it all together and flick it to them as fast as possible. I mean, I could 
easily just exposed it normally, thrown my LUT on there, but sometimes it does take a little bit more to tweak and make it look a little bit more better. So after all that, which one is best for you? What do you use? Look, I absolutely understand if you don't want to go to S-Log3, then don't. It's perfectly fine. You don't have to. You're just going to miss out on a little bit of dynamic range and you're going to miss out on color grading it however you want to color grade it. But then it also comes down to obviously that speed and, you know, are you just shooting or are you actually editing and coloring as well? And if you're not editing and coloring, you have to understand, is your editor a colorist or can your editor color it correctly? Do they need the footage just there and then, no coloring involved, then that's probably where you would have to go as Cinetone. But this is a discussion that you need to have with your client or the person you're actually going to be working with. Is it fine to shoot an S-Log3 or do you want an S-Cinetone? So overall, it really just depends on your workflow, but I absolutely recommend start trying to utilize S-Log3 because you're going to get so much more information, dynamic range and colors to work with. And uh, it just gives you so much more flexibility in post-production when it comes to a creative grade. But one of the biggest things is don't do this on a paid job. Do this on an experimental job. Do this around the house. Just play around with it. Film yourself in your studio or your house and trying to play with the colors and see what it looks like and play around with the zebra levels as well. What works with you? Is it 95%? Is it 100%? 100% plus? Really depends. I stick to 95%. So uh, play around with those exposure tools and just have a look at the footage and see what works in your workflow. Anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. That would be absolutely amazing. And uh, thanks to each and every one of you guys that have subscribed to my channel already. And uh, yeah, we're on our way to 100,000. That would be amazing if I could hit that this year in 2023. But thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around to the end. If you're still here, you're a legend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.